the second question please maha return now the point is if in the prophecies the messiah who is promised by hazrat rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam as isa ibn maryam he would descend if this is what he meant literally to be the same messiah as was born at the end of moses umma if this is the meaning then the prophecy the whole prophecy has to be taken literally and all that is mentioned in the prophecy must be taken literally jesus is literal the jal is literal his donkey is literal and what the donkey does should also be understood literally because it is not metaphor then but if jesus is metaphorical the one who would come in spirit but not in person then the entire prophecy should be understood in its metaphoric metaphoric concept or message not literal message god is speaking in parables and metaphors like jesus christ spoke in so much, so much in parables so holy quran hold the holy quran also implies uh, employs parables in this case let me turn to the hadith you are referring to and remind you that neither jesus is literal nor the jal is literal nor his donkey is all the prophecies have to be understood and interpreted and there must be a spiritual key with which we solve the prophecy and understand the message now you have made it easier for me by mentioning the jal Jesus is mentioned to descend in the latter days Jesus son of Mary of course to do what among his functions would be to kill dajjal yaqtulul dajjal wa yaqtulul khinzir to kill the swine and yaqsilus sili to break the cross these are the three functions mentioned in this prophecy now if the jal means the same single joint like figure who will be so huge that while standing on the ground it has his head would be above the cloud lines he would have one single eye <coughs> that would be blind one one eye would be blind the other eye the single left eye would be very bright so bright and so powerful that it would be able to x-ray what is underneath the earth and see the the trees lying under the earth so one eye is so bright and so brilliant the other is absolutely blind which is right now we believe that this is all this is all metaphors neither one single person is mentioned as the jal not real swines are mentioned in relation to jesus is killing them not real crosses made of stone or jewels and things are meant to be literally broken by jesus christ neither jesus is literal nor these things are literal so our interpretation is very consistent in this regard we believe that jesus is a spiritual representation of the old christ not little not that he would return himself when he comes his main task would be to break the cross which means the to break the central argument of christianity in favor of trinity this is cross this is a symbol of cross trinity so he would come and break the cross spiritually in the sense that he would offer provide such powerful arguments against the trinity as if cross is broken not literally of course he would kill swine means that he would wage a war against a culture which has lost coyness and shame and decency which is as shameless and as permissive 
as you find the swines. So it is, again, an, an expression of rejection of a cultural behavior, which is uh, not at all decent anymore. It's more like the cultural reaction of swines are than those of human beings. So he would wage a war against those indecencies as well. When it is said that he would kill the Dajjal, it doesn't mean he would murder him with his sword. It simply means that the influence of the Dajjal would begin to wane out from the time he comes and he would gradually dissipate and new things would appear. There will be a revolution in the world taking place. These old huge powers will gradually lose their strength. So by the Dajjal we mean great Christian powers. The symbol of Christian powers is Trinity, cross, eating of swine. So in every way you look at it, the finger is pointing at the same people, that is, in the latter days, according to this prophecy, the Christian world will become so powerful that they will rule the entire world. And this would be the stature of Christianity as symbolized in a great giant against whom nobody has any power. This giant is described in the Hadith as conquering every land, every people of the world. And in the rise of the West in the current history, or the previous history, you find not an inch of land left un unoccupied, ungoverned by the superior might of the Western nations. There was a time, you know, where either it was ruled by the British or by the Russians or by the Germans or by any other Europeans or even Americans, but the whole globe fell under the sway of Christian past. This is exactly what has been prophesied by Hazrat Muhammad regarding the advent of Dajjal. So we see as having been fulfilled that Dajjal has come, that fight has begun. And what is the main instrument in the hands of Hazrat Musim al Islam through which he broke the cross into two? His claim that Jesus died a natural death. He did not die upon cross. And he died like an ordinary prophet of Allah, so he was not little son of God. If you believe in this, if enough proof is provided to you to believe in this, then cross is broken. There is one meaning, the meaning we prefer. If you reject that meaning, then the only alternative left to you is that meaning which is presented and adhered to very tenaciously by the anti Ahmadiyya mullahs all over the world. They say, no, 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 this is nonsense. We will not permit you to interpret the Holy Quran sensibly. What right have you got to interpret the Holy Quran or the Holy Hadith sensibly? Let us follow the literal meaning exactly, verbatim, as it expresses itself. So to say, we believe that Jesus would descend from heaven, literally the same person as lived around 2,000 years ago. Where is he now when we inquire? They say somewhere between this world and the other world, dangling somewhere in the fourth heaven, by himself, alone. Because all prophets are dead and they have gone to the other world. Jesus is still alive, so he is preserved before that border. And according to them, that border lies somewhere in the fourth heaven. This, this is a little meaning, at least they are honest that, in that much that they stick to the little meaning. But this is the absurdity they have to believe and they want all the other Muslims to believe. But then follows the greater absurdities, compounded absurdities. They say Jesus would come, say after 2000 years, so far he has not come according to them. Then what would he find? He would find a Dajjal, a huge giant, 
the dimensions of which are so incredible that even such a man is not mentioned in fairy tales or tales of the jinns. No giant will you find mentioned as big and as huge as the, the child. So he said there would actually be a joint born and he would travel the whole earth and conquer every nation and every people. Now what would be the mode of his travel? How would he travel so fast? Would he run very fast? They say, no, no. The Hadith also tells us that a donkey would be born to carry this huge giant. And the donkey would be as huge, matchingly, as the giant himself would be. The distance between two air lobes would be 105 feet. And as far as his hugeness is concerned, he will carry the giant on his back to travel around the world. But at the same time, there will be side openings in his belly. And he would stop at stages. And it would be announced that the time for the giant to depart has come. So many minutes left, so many minutes left, come and get in. And people would rush in and enter the belly of the giant from the side openings, from both sides. Strange sort of giant, with a strange sort of donkey to help him. And then the Hadith tells us that this donkey would not eat fodder. It would be a fire-driven donkey, fire-powered donkey. It would eat only f fire to get its uh, energy to move, to function as, as, as a life thing does. So as against the forward driven donkeys, a new donkey would be created for the sake of the jal, which would be fire powered. This is very clear. Now, what would be the speed of that donkey? How fast would he carry that giant and the people in his bellies? The speed, according to Muhammad Rasulullah would vary from land to sea to air. On the land he is described to be able to travel as fast as ordinarily people travel for one month, and the, if, uh, travel a distance in one month, according to the old culture, old system. That donkey would cover the same distance in one hour. So instead of 30 days continuous journey, he would carry his passengers to the destiny within one hour. That fast will he move. Will he move only on land or also in the sea? The Hadith says, yes, he would be able to swim on the oceans and he will not drown. The same donkey, the same fire-powered donkey is mentioned in the tradition to go across oceans and he would not sink. But he would carry even greater loads on his back. It is said that it would be the same donkey employed by the Dajjal, the power which owns it, to transport wheat and other food aids to poorer nations as if that donkey would be carrying mountains of food on its back when it swims in the ocean. And that food would be sent not only not to the poor people of all the world indiscriminately, that would be sent only to those to whom, who bow to the Jal and his supremacy. So the aid would be tied, would be linked. It would not be free aid, to Ethiopia, for instance, when it dies of hunger, or to Somalia when it dies of hunger, because they would not be tied up with the American policies. That aid would be tied only to those, to the condition that they accept the supremacy of their master, the Jal, and then they will be provided with food, otherwise not. Now, this donkey would do this task according to the traditions. But this is not all the surprise for us. 
the Holy Prophet says that donkey would be able to fly above the cloud line because he says at times he would make a jump as big as if his one foot was in the east and second would be in the west. So any aeroplanes which takes off from India, from Africa, from Pakistan or any other eastern countries and lands either in Europe or in America continues to declare the truth of the Holy Prophet that this is what he envisioned, this is what he saw beforehand. And I am here as an evidence that he was a true prophet of Allah. His prophecy is right. That is when it is interpreted our way. When you believe that the, the prophecy was metaphorical, it didn't mean a little donkey. It meant a mode of travel only. A mode of travel which would be a land mode of travel, sea mode of travel, air mode of travel. But the common feature would be that all these modes will be fire-powered as against the food of donkeys. So, this again a metaphorical issue. But not so with the other mullahs. They said, no, 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 don't be absurd. When Hazrat Rasulullah said such a donkey would be born, believe it would be born. If not today, tomorrow. You see a huge donkey born out of a weakling mother, ordinary mother, donkey, who would grow to this abnormal size. And then you will see the giant also appearing from so nowhere. And then he will start riding and there will be opening made on the side of the donkey. All these modern planes will be abandoned. All the trains and the ships will be abandoned. A new mode of travel will be provided to mankind. They will always sit in the, prefer to sit in the belly of the donkey. This is what they would have. Which side would, are you on? Consult your conscience. Which is a greater tribute <coughs> to the greatness of Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu This meaningful interpretation or that nonsensical interpretation which puts to shame even the worst fairy tales if taken literally. Thank you.